If your toddler has been diagnosed with autism or is waiting for a diagnosis, you're going to want to pay attention for the next 60 seconds. Happy Ladders is parent-led early autism therapy that empowers you, the parent, to teach your toddler essential developmental skills through play. Studies have shown that the parent-led model is highly effective while eliminating frustration over long wait lists or the worry about losing precious developmental time, all without the disruption of people coming into your home. Happy Ladders includes activities that target 150 essential developmental skills every toddler needs, as well as assessments in four different developmental areas. There's also an exclusive community of parents just like you and professional coaching to ensure success for both you and your toddler. To learn more, get a free trial, and take advantage of an exclusive limited time offer for my listeners, visit happyladders.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-L-A-D-D-E-R-S. Use the code THEAUTISMDAD at checkout to save 50% off the monthly membership. Plus, get a free one-on-one session as well as access to the Tantrums and Meltdown mini course. This is a limited time offer, so act now. If your toddler has been diagnosed with autism or is waiting for a diagnosis, you're going to want to pay attention for the next 60 seconds. Happy Ladders is parent-led early autism therapy that empowers you, the parent, to teach your toddler essential developmental skills through play. Studies have shown that the parent-led model is highly effective while eliminating frustration over long wait lists or the worry about losing precious developmental time, all without the disruption of people coming into your home. Happy Ladders includes activities that target 150 essential developmental skills every toddler needs, as well as assessments in four different developmental areas. There's also an exclusive community of parents just like you and professional coaching to ensure success for both you and your toddler. To learn more, get a free trial, and take advantage of an exclusive limited time offer for my listeners, visit happyladders.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-L-A-D-D-E-R-S. Use the code THEAUTISMDAD at checkout to save 50% off the monthly membership. Plus, get a free one-on-one session as well as access to the Tantrums and Meltdown mini course. This is a limited time offer, so act now. My name is Rob Gorski, and this is the Autism Dad Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. You guys are super awesome. I really appreciate you. Um, if you've listened before, you're probably already aware that I, I like to use my platform, whether it's the podcast or the blog or social media, whatever, to, to help improve your quality of life. Sometimes it's connecting you with products and services and companies and organizations or people who are doing things that I think can enrich uh, your life, or your child's life, or just your family life overall. And today I have two guests. They're both part of the same thing. And they're here to talk about an app that they created that is that is designed to, to help you track your child's behavioral trends. And it's really cool the way that it works. I'll let them explain it in just a second. But I just want to take a minute and welcome uh, Michael Fondalinda and Herman Lindfeldt. They are the creators of an app called Tracto, and we're going to have a conversation about how it works, how it benefits uh, families, and and sort of the problems that it that it aims to solve. So thank you guys for taking the time to come on a show. Uh, Michael, we'll start with you. Would you just take a quick second and introduce yourself? So yeah, this is Rob. Yeah, thanks for having us here. Just me, Michael. Funderlinde, uh, yeah, one of the co-founders of Mental Technologies, who develops the tracker application we're going to talk about today. Yeah, and I've been involved in the digital health space for more than eight years by now, and I think just want to talk a little bit more about me. I think addressing complex problems through innovation has just always been a central theme in my life, and I think I'm, I'm pretty confident this is why I always end up in digital health, as it's a space that just there's so much complexity. It just so much, um, you know, un- unaddressed needs. And Herman, take a second and introduce yourself. Yes, uh, I'm on Linfeld. I'm co-founder with Augmental, um, the dad of two beautiful children as well. Um, I've been creating software for more than 20 years. And um, like Michael, I'm also passionate about using technology to, to have a positive impact on people's health. And this last few years, really seeing that impact in the digital health side and um, addressing the numerous issues that we have with health systems and so using software. It's kind of like COVID has opened our eyes to like yes. so many different things. And and technology can be used, when used properly, I think, can be used to really improve the quality of life and address some of these things. So why don't we talk about the, the Tracto app? Michael, can you tell me a little bit about what it is and kind of what was the thought process behind it? Like what need did you see that needed filled? So about three years ago, Herman and myself, we started working with actual patients. We started collaborating with, uh, with parents, with, uh, with mental health care providers, 
the teachers, and we went in with, with just a learning mindset, trying to understand how technology could address some of the key problems within the space of pediatric mental health care. That's really where it started. Um, and that's where we started learning about, you know, directly from these families, the, the journey that they're on and the key hurdles that, that these families need to go through. And that's really where it started. And some, just to highlight some of the few that we're now actively trying to um, address via Tractor. So to name a few, it's just, firstly was uh, working with these parents, we quickly gauged like being a parent of a, of a child that's diagnosed with a neurodiverse or mental health condition. It's just an incredibly overwhelming responsibility. I'm sure you've spoken about this a lot. It's, it's not something that you're prepared for. This is not something that uh, right. that you know uh, what you've signed up for, and um, and this is a central theme you see in you know, the over six hundred parents that that already use Tractor, on, you know, on, in their daily lives. So that was something where we saw that technology could play an interesting role in in giving parents an ease of mind. If we delve a little bit deeper, a key problem that stood stood out for us is the information that's used typically within you know mental health and broad. It's not. It's very different from a heart condition, for example. You know, you don't have a blood pressure mm-hmm. measurement. It's observational information. It's, and I think all parents can relate with this, this the typical clinical situation where you end up with your care provider and they ask you, "So, Rob, tell me about your son's symptoms over the last six months to twelve months." The reality is, I mean, I can't remember how my sleep was last week monday i don't remember what i had for breakfast <laughs> yeah right so, yeah <laughs> exactly. i get that <laughs> I, get, I get that so you're like okay well this is this is a, a problem that that we really think technology could play who could play an important role to create a, the ability to monitor instead of this typical assessment based approach but make the technology part of the journey and over time be able to collect information at different points in time and that allow parents to give uh, you know, an objective feeling at the right time. And then only at the end of the period, let's say if you look six months back, you're able to look at six months of history through a much more objective, you know, and hopefully more accurate view. Um, and that was something that, that was interesting because it was only, not only parents highlighted this problem. This was incredibly um, significantly highlighted by our different specialists that we work with, including pediatricians psychologists, psychiatrists. So we, we were just quite, I must say, taken aback by that the status quo, just there's a lot of opportunity for bias and, and just lower, you know, lower quality information used for decision making. So that was something that really stood out. Yeah, there's a, a lot of mental health related things are observational or subjective. Correct. You know, with things like ADHD and stuff like that, like when you go to the doctor and be like, hey, my kid, I think has ADHD. It's observational a little bit. Sometimes they have you fill out, uh, they take like paperwork to the school so the teachers can right. share what they've observed. And it's, it's all like paper and pencil kind of things. It's not like, here's a, here's a link, sign in and put this information in. And it's largely subjective. So it's the teacher's opinion yep. or the parent's opinion. You know, there's no blood test or anything like that. Um, and then you just sort of experiment with meds and if they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. And then you move on to a different path. There is no real user-friendly organized way of connecting all of these things together, I guess. And, and Herman, is that sort of what the goal with Tracto is? Yes. Uh, Two things that we, that the way we addressed it is first of all, getting rid of that once a year or once every six months kind of big paper assessment by having small little observations more regularly. So the app helps with that. And then also connecting the parents and the teachers. The teachers can form part. The parents can invite the teacher to form part of the team on the app. So you get that day-to-day or week-to-week observations. Once again, small uh, observations, not big assessments that has to be done um, from the teachers. So you have, you have uh, information through the year and it's there in a report available that you can share with your care provider. So you're giving them better information to base decisions on whether they should change the medication or other activities uh, that must maybe be taken into account in the care plan. So just, you know, basically what I've been doing in my career is building teams and getting them to communicate with each other. And, and in a way, in Tractor, we're getting 
that team around a child to communicate better and share information better and make it easier for them. As a, as a parent who's been dealing with this for a very, very long time, um, one of the challenges that I've had, especially when you have kids that even have like medical complications on top of mm -hmm. autism or whatever else is, is going on in their life, and you have different specialists for different things in the United States, because I guess, where, where are you guys based at? In South Africa. Um, but, okay. but we also, we're focusing a lot on the U.S. market and previous company we've worked with, we were focusing mostly on the U.S. So, so we, we, we have a bit of background context around the system there and spend uh -huh. some time there. A lot of our stuff done is done at the Cleveland Clinic. And they have, and there's, there's an app called MyChart, which can track like your appointments and schedule and stuff like that. But it's largely one way. Mm. You can go and view information, but you can't really add information. It's just sort of like a digital filing cabinet or whatever of, of database of everything that's gone on in your medical history since you've been there. It's helpful, but it's not really interactive. It's not really, um, it's I have access to it and the doctors have access to it, but no one's really communicating with each other. No one's really seen, hey, this just happened and they don't get notification of something. Like it's just, it's not, it serves a purpose, but it doesn't make life a whole lot easier for situations like like this when you're trying to tease out a diagnosis or try and figure out how much of something is anxiety versus ADHD or autism related symptoms, you know, something that helps to facilitate communication, I think, and keeping that flow of information back and forth, I think is really important because it keeps everybody up to date. And it's not like you said, it's not once a year filling out like 30 pages of paper, trying to remember things that happened more than five minutes ago. Yeah which in COVID time anymore is like, I, you know, everything's mush. Yeah. How does it work? Well, there's, there's different levels. So, so there's um, on the first, first hand tracking observations, there's, we just call it concerns, but it can be behavioral concerns, like maybe concentration, ability to listen. It can be um, things around sleep or maybe side effects from medicine, headaches, stomach aches, things like that. So there's uh, various Concerns, social interactions, um, uh, that anxiety, mood, things like that that can be tracked. So the, the parent basically choose what they want to track. The teacher can choose what they're interested in tracking for a specific child, depending how they're involved. This is tracked over time. It can be, it's a simple reminder that you can set the frequency and you track this over time and you see whether it's increasing, uh, improving or not improving. And then we, we provide some information around these concerns, uh, tips how to improve sleep, for example, and so on from clinical experts. Um, that, so that's the one hand. The other hand, it allows you to set up your care plan, the medication activities like maybe occupational therapy or, or even just things like play, play with the child, go for a walk, go for a run. We, we try and encourage those kind of activities because it has a massive impact. Um, so you can set those up and you can set up reminders and track adherence uh, again. So you can see, listen, I'm actually adhering to this. Or for, for that week, we, we didn't do the, the daily walk around the block. So we can actually see it affected our child's sleep in the evening or something like that. So you can start seeing those, uh, those uh, correlations between what you're doing uh, and, or not doing and, and the concerns you're tracking. And then the third aspect that, that we um, added there is also just ability to journal. So you can create journal entries, much more free form, just for your own observations as a parent, but you can also choose to share this. And the teachers, again, they can do their own observations just for themselves to, to help them remember things they've tried maybe in class, but also to share with the parent in a, in a bit of a more uh, secure environment than than WhatsApp groups and those that can sometimes become a bit emotional and subjective. Been there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Me as well. <laughs> no. No, no, and Rob, to, to add a, a fourth element to it, it we, and it's very new, yeah. we literally launched it last week. Uh, we, um, we've now launched a what we call a, a power-up marketplace. But essentially what we've done is we've partnered with global leading mental health care specialists. And we've co-created specific courses, online courses, which are very specific to our community. Instead of having broad courses about broad topics that are not tied back to our community, 
it's so important as a parent to equip yourself with the skills and knowledge to really be able to, as to your best of your ability, support your child. Yep. It's just it's a it's a topic that that's really it's really close to our heart, and it's it, we just we literally have a waiting list now of incredible dietitians, uh, pediatricians, psychologists that are sharing the knowledge in a way that's co- that's convenient. So as a parent, for example, you're able to watch this course um, in small nuggets at your own pace. Are they audio, video? Uh, audio and video. So video, yeah, primarily, yeah. They're like short little classes or yeah, something. Cor- kind of. Correct. Yeah. So instead of like scrolling through TikTok, or, which, which I am very guilty of doing <laughs> endlessly at times, it seems, uh, you can actually get like bite-sized chunks that help you to overcome certain obstacles. Like what, what are some examples of some of the classes or. So as an example, um, one of the, one of the courses is done by a uh, renowned um, clinical psychologist and it's around the, the fundamentals of the parent and child relationship and emotional communication. And it's, it's just absolutely fascinating there. It, it is a, it's it's an area that parents are generally really not equipped to understand um, emotional communication from a child's perspective. So the course then mm-hmm. revolves around teaching a child vo- you know, emotional vocabulary and equipping a parent to facilitate that kind of communication at home, which is a very important part of of forming a very healthy foundation you know, with the child. So that's one thing. As an example, some other examples are also um, specifically around the relationship between ADHD and anxiety, which we know is a very, very hot topic throughout the last few years. As with everything around us, you know, um, we know through a lot of evidence, and I think everybody here can acknowledge, you know, in your own close family, seeing anxiety at different levels because of all the uncertainty happening. So that's the course that's gotten a lot of good feedback from parents as well. It's just being able to understand how these things influence each other. All right, real quick break. Um, starting something new. I'm going to start dropping trailers for podcasts that I'm really a big fan of. And I got a couple of friends named Brian and Sean. They have a podcast called Just Two Dads. They're absolutely hilarious. Once you guys start listening to them, you're never going to want to stop. So you have been warned. Here's a trailer. Enjoy. Make sure you guys check them out. Hi, I'm Sean Francis. And I'm Brian Altunian. And we are. We are. Just just two two dads. dads. (laughs) That's just, that doesn't. I don't. We're not professionals, obviously. We know what we're doing. This is as real as it gets. Anyway, we are Just Two Dads, and we have a weekly podcast, Anywhere You Get podcast, where we talk about different issues that affect the special needs community, especially when it comes to raising a child and from a dad's perspective. Look at you're watching the stopwatch. You want to make sure that we get this all in in 30 seconds. You can catch us That's live right. every week on Facebook, or you can catch us on our YouTube channel under We Are Just Two Dads, or podcasts or wherever you get podcasts. Hope that you'll catch us weekly on Just Two Dads. See you then. So is this something that you're going to continually add yes. new courses? Yes. Like as time goes forward? Okay. Exactly. For example, um, now uh, we're hoping to, within the next month or two, have, have a sleep therapy one available. That's the really just focusing on sleep and tied to, to ways to measure that in more detail from, from the app as well. So, yeah, and, and we we busy with working with a lot of clinical experts, different levels to just add to that content. And there's some existing, interesting, also digitally packaged care solutions out there that we want to make more discoverable and available to parents as well. And so they, they can know about it and learn about it because it's really there's other teams doing great stuff, but very little people know about it. And just making that, that available through a trusted source. That's actually a very interesting topic to, to touch on is the, you know, what courses we would develop. And I think. You know, our ethos is really like is reaching out to, to to the community and being like, you know, what are the key questions that are then working our way backwards? And, and it's, what's interesting is the feedback from the specialists we work with are really positive about with that as well. Very receptive, well received um, to work mm-hmm. our way really from the parent perspective first. So, I mean, that could be something that we'd love to, I don't know, create a, a server maybe if you know, and ask, ask your community as well if there are key topics that they would want us to prioritize. That'd be interesting. That's a really good idea. One of the, one of the things that I, I like about you guys is you're doing this for the right reasons, right? Like we've, we've, had, we've had a conversation before this episode recording and, and you guys are like, you want to make a difference. 
and you want to impact families in a positive way. And being open to suggestions from parents, I think, is, is a really good way to do that. Because they might say, uh, there's there's so many common things just dealing with like with autism by itself. There's sensory related things that we struggle with as parents, meltdowns, overstimulations, kind of tied to the sensory stuff. But there's feeding challenges. There's, like you said, sleep issues, issues with uh, schools, trying to navigate how you set things up or how you help your child to reach their potential. I mean, there's potty training is another one. I mean, there's a million things that that parents are scouring the internet <laughs> trying to find help for and little bite-sized classes or courses from reputable experts in those fields is that's, that's a cool thing. Every time I find a company or an organization or somebody who's doing something really cool like this, it's a reminder of how little there was back when I first started doing this, (laughs) because the idea of having something like this and there's like an Android and iOS app, right? Correct. Yes. So the idea of having this, in your phone was unheard of 20 years ago when I first became a, an autism parent. And this is really, really cool, especially for people who are just getting started because their entire journey can now be heavily influenced by having these tools available to them. What has the reception been? Like how are, how are families using this? After the families we work with have also given us a lot of feedback because I think it's probably like you said, because we're very open to making it part of the journey. And I mean, some of the feedback we've seen parents saying it gives them ease of mind, ease of mind. Because they can objectively over time when they go back to the to, to the pediatrician, for example, share that story, but have a much more objective story. So that's the one. The other interesting use case that we've seen is, is revolves around the sort of long-term journey, especially with the children. And you guys would know is is over time the social context change. Physiologically, the child also changes. Yep. So care needs to adapt according to those changes and and that's also where tractor really shines because it allows the team to be a lot more proactive about these changes and not only being aware of it as soon as red lights go on um or involve conversations earlier i mean that's and we've seen a lot of uh, there's, there's been a lot of jokes about it from from our parents but because uh, the way tractor is built is both for example both mom and dad just as an example have their own versions of the application so let's assume you know the dad you say, Rob, uh, you know, like you started the, you downloaded the application, you create the profile, you can invite that team, which includes both parents, because it's managed by themselves. And we know that uh, often a, a barrier to a child receiving the appropriate care is actually conflict between parents, because they see the side effects or symptoms differently at different times of the day. So, and we really, we, we're seeing this objective conversation now happening between, you know, parents. and. Uh, yeah, and there's, I mean, it's it, that's been quite quite valuable to see that, and and then also some of the other feedback. So in South Africa, we've rolled out to a few remedial schools, um, where the schools are now using Tractor as part of the parent-teacher relationship and communication processes or policies at the school. And they have seen a lot of positive feedback from parents and from teachers being able to share this intimate information with each other and hold each other accountable, which has been quite interesting. Are parents getting excited about it? Like, are they are they finding it to be a very positive experience? Yes, I think overwhelmingly positive, which is really great. Also, really concrete ideas as well. Uh, for example, something that's that's interesting that that came out is uh, the need for a teenager focused app. We focused it up to now on more on a on a kids round, you know, three, four to 12, yeah. 13, where the parents are more the primary role player in the care team. But teenagers start getting active in their own care management. And and then there's a lot of other ways of managing that. So so that's becoming a big priority for us this year. And and that that's that's feedback coming from the from the parents, from the family saying, hey listen, we, we want this. And, and yeah, we thought about it, but now it's, no, we, we, we need to provide it quicker, uh, you know, earlier stage. So, so that's, you know, just, just that feedback and seeing how it's changing uh, lives, the stories that we hear is, is you know, that's what get, gets us up in the day to really go on with this journey and embrace it is, is that. What is the cost for parents? To use the basic app as we have it now is free. The care management site, tracking the concerns, sharing, that's a free version of the app. There's um, some premium functionality that they can, that the parents can subscribe to that 
just adds a bit more and we're going to evolve that further but you don't need to to use that to to use the app and to to make use of the care management the courses that we mentioned that's one soft payments and um, but we try and keep that cost like very low our idea is to get as many parents as possible to to have access to that and to be able to afford it um, and that's that's what's important for us okay free and then they can they can like if they want to if they see a course that they want to take then they can just like subscribe to that or, mm. or it's a one-time thing but then they have Correct. access to that yeah. ongoing Correct. yes yeah, Correct. yeah okay. lifelong access to that and they and they can complete it at their own leisure own time mm. whenever that is how can they find you guys tracto.app that's super easy so like if i wanted to use this and i wanted to give my my kids teachers access to this is it free for them as well Correct. Yes. if it's just the information yeah. back and forth the tracking part of it invite the teacher via their email address and they sip and they part of and then you can decide you know if you move to a different school or something then you can remove them again and we, we're very um, strict about data security and privacy so that's all under the parents control and um, yeah so they can decide who's on the team and who leaves the team and, and so on I, th- I think that's something yeah on the, the parent being the driver's seat so empowering so you guys are like wanting to really empower the parents mm-hmm. Mm. to be able to to handle all of these things without like on their own terms yes right they can set up the structure they can set up the framework that they want that works out best for them so it's not like a cookie cutter kind of thing and then they can apply the tools that are available in this app to what fits their situation exactly exactly that okay Uh, and i mean just as an example that's very cool yeah i just wanted to say as an example if you would compare a parent and a, a teacher access just purely on a what data the teacher sees, the teacher only sees what they recorded, what they have added into the application. They do not have access okay. to the, the parents' notes and what, what they're tracking. Um, and we did it explicitly like that. Um, but so, so the teacher can still learn from their own activities and care progress over time, but the parent can see everything that the whole team has shared in one, you know, in one view. So it's really, once again, Giving the parent the the driver, you know, the driver's seat. Well, and you can see trending behavior too, yeah, right? Over exactly. time, instead of like trying to, um, it kind of reminds me just because I was thinking about this the other day of like uh, a food log, right? Like you're trying to lose weight, or you're trying to gain weight, or whatever. And if you don't track everything kind of in real time as you go, it's harder to get a better picture of what's actually happening. And so when you track it daily. You know, as things happen or every meal or whatever, whatever, you can see a correlation between what you're eating and, and where your weight's going. So with with kids in something like this, you can see a correlation between environmental factors like school or, or schools called off or whatever or COVID related. And you can you can see changes over time and you can make decisions based on data that's more accurate than trying to just recall you know, what happened last month or how did they react when the dosage increased or something? Cause that, like you said, like who remembers what they had for breakfast anymore? So this can be a really important tool for parents and it's free. Correct. Yeah. All right. Do you have anything you wanted to add before we close things out? Like, is there, like, what do you want parents to know about Tracto? Well, we talked a lot about what Tracto does feature wise, but I think for me, what's important from, from a, a value side is with Tractor, we, you know, I like that word empower. We want to empower the parents, the families, that they can, you know, to, to support them in improving their child's health and by improving the care and the information and the access to care. And so, so it's for us important not to create extra noise, but to, to create, to, to allow them to, you know, make it easier for them to manage that care. So that, that's, that's at, at the heart of, of what we're trying to achieve. And for for us, it's also extremely important to always learn, to learn from them and to listen from them. So I really want to encourage the parents to, you know, if they have questions, if they have ideas, if they have feedback, get in touch with us. Our details is also on, on Tractor.app. We, we love to hear their stories and, and to get that, that real life input and feedback and, and learn from that. Uh, Michael, anything else you wanted to add? No, no, I think uh, Adamant's magic words kind of summed up <laughs> everything I also wanted to say. No, but Rob, just thanks 
I think from also just to you for and 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 high five virtually uh, for for all the amazing yeah, work that <laughs> there you go for all the amazing <laughs> amazing work that you're doing and and I and I think there's not a lot of that you know active individuals you know in our community um, you know jumping to the forefront speaking out we know that stigma is still very much with the, within our community and and I think working closely mm-hmm. with people like yourself you know individuals that really have you know, the same mission at heart is are we going to scale this um, and, mm. and support period. So thanks to you. And well, I, I really appreciate that. And if you guys want to find uh, the Tracto app, you can just go to tracto.app. That's super easy. And that's such a great, I always try Like if ever I start something, I always want to, I always nab the URLs right away. And tracto.app is super easy. That's like, that's really easy to remember. But in case you can't, It'll be in the show notes and you can just click it and uh, take you to their site. Um, and again, the app is free. So all the tracking stuff, you don't, you don't have to pay for. So you got absolutely nothing to risk. Just give it a try. Maybe it's a really good fit for your family and it can help you to streamline communication between teachers and doctors and everything else and just sort of uh, clear out the noise. Uh, like, like Herman said a minute ago, just sort of remove some of the noise and, and get you more accurate information. And, and I think it promotes team building too. Like, uh, my friend, Amy Nielsen wrote a book called takes a village and it's true. It takes a village, especially when you have kids with additional challenges and, and having people on your team who can, uh, can help support you is really, really important. So thank you again for, for coming on the show and talking to us about the app. I think parents will be able to benefit from that and yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. We really appreciate it. All right. You guys have a great week. Stay safe. Cool. You Thanks, too. Rob. And, uh, We'll talk soon. Yes, guys. Right, bye. Bye bye. Before I close things out, I just want to say thank you to Michael and Herman for taking the time to come on the show, talking to us about the Tracto app. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, you can find more information about Tracto at tracto.app. It's T R A C T O dot app. Uh, there'll be a link in the show notes below, so you can just click on that if you want. As for me, you can find me at theautismdad.com. All my social links are at the top left of the page. You can subscribe to this podcast and any one of your favorite podcast listening apps. Just hit that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, if you could also rate it, uh, that would be very helpful. Helps me to kind of know what I'm doing right and wrong and what I can do to improve. So I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will talk to you next Monday. Thanks. Bye.